Okay, it is four o'clock, and so we are going to get started with our first department seminar of the year. I'd like to thank everybody who's here, both in person and online. Um, I hope you're all doing well, and I look forward to getting everybody in the same room for one of these in the near future. But in the meantime, I'm very excited that we have the means to still provide a seminar series to everybody uh, wherever they may, they may be. Uh, one quick housekeeping item I would like to request is that everybody except for our speaker, I'm asking to please mute your microphone at the beginning and, um, and, then we will, and, and then we will unmute it whenever we begin the question and answer session after his presentation. Um, my name is Steve Shannon. I'm a professor in the Department of Nuclear Engineering and the Director of Graduate Programs. And I want to welcome you. Um, we have an exciting colloquium series this semester uh, at, organized by Professor Avramova. And uh, we have uh, 14 speakers scheduled spanning academia, national labs, industry, and, uh, and regulatory agencies. So we're going to have a good breadth of presentations from now until mid-November. Um, next week's speaker is going to be Dr. Gregory uh, Delapay from NC State, and he's going to be presenting on pellet cladding uh, gap heat transfer modeling for rod ejection accidents using an uncertainty quantification framework. Um, a couple of quick things for those of you who may be watching this remotely or wandering the halls somewhere in Burlington, please note that the in-person location for the seminar has moved to 216 Man Hall across the street so that we can accommodate a larger crowd than what we can put into Progress Energy Lecture Hall. Um, and, the, and the seminars will be hosted here for in person for the remainder of the semester. Um, obviously, we have remote access and face-to-face -face access. Um, please know for the graduate students who are participating that attendance is still taken. And, and, um, and if you're in person, please email me your attendance um, so it, it, since we don't, in, in the absence of a hard copy sign-up sheet, and if, you're, um, and if you're watching online, we'll be going through and looking at the participants and, and taking care of that. Um, live streaming is going to happen over Zoom, as you've all figured out, and we're hoping to be able to download the presentation and be able to archive it and post it on our department YouTube channel in the near future. So we're working through that as we speak. Uh, for those of you who are here in person, or I guess for those of you who are joining us remotely, I apologize for the lack of snacks and coffee. Unfortunately, um, because of the current health conditions, it's not advised that we hand out food um, and have a buffet line prior to our seminar talk. So at this time, I would like to introduce uh, this, this, this week's uh, seminar speaker. Our seminar speaker is Dr. Uh, Botros Hanna, from, um, who's currently a postdoctoral research He's scholar. Of the Consortium for Advanced Simulation of Life Diversity for Edgar Who's currently a uh, postdoctoral research scholar in the Computer Science Department at New Mexico State University. Uh, he is developing a system for artificial intelligence guided decision support and automated reasoning for nuclear power plant management and control. Dr. Hanna did his PhD and master's degrees, both in nuclear engineering at North Carolina State University, where he studied from the fall of 2012 to the spring of 2018. And his current research areas include physics informed machine learning, computational fluid dynamics, and artificial intelligence guided reasoning. And with that, um, I will hand the floor, floor over to our speaker and I'll welcome him sort of back to NC State or as close as he can get to NC State at this time. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Shannon, uh, for the introduction and for the invitation. Um, uh, today, uh, my presentation will be about uh, artificial intelligence guided operator, operator support system for the nuclear uh, plant management. Um, here I'm starting with uh, with outlines, so I will start by giving a general uh, introduction. So I give a, a background about artificial intelligence and uh, uh, some application and the some types of artificial intelligence, and um, I will talk about the motivation behind this work. 
And then I will give a, uh, an overview of uh, AI guided operator support system that are uh, proposed for the nuclear plant uh, uh, management and control. And uh, then I will talk about my work uh, in developing uh, a reasoning based operator uh, support system. I will talk about uh, the, the approach I use, which is uh, the anthracite programming. Uh, after talking about uh, the objectives, I will explain the structure of the uh, reasoning based operator support system. And uh, the case study uh, I worked on, which is uh, the accident scenario of Three Mile Island. Uh, I will give also uh, some slides about explaining the answers uh, uh, that AI produces, and I will end by the conclusion conclusions. Um, so, in, in general, AI can it can uh, use to mean uh, many many things, but in general, it's defined as a study of methods uh, by which a computer can simulate uh, the human intelligence. Uh, some of the well-known uh, uh, applications and success of AI uh, includes uh, something like, uh, like using AI machine to defeat a human in chess or an AlphaGo game, uh, using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, uh, for, for the Tesla car and uh, developing programs that can learn how to play uh, some video games given rules. And uh, AI was also applied in robots and drones and, uh, and many other applications. Uh, the algorithm of AI in general, it can be divided to uh, two uh, general uh, categories, uh, statistical AI methods and uh, knowledge representation and reasoning methods. Statistical methods include uh, uh, methods like deep learning, machine learning, uh, patient network reinforcement learning, and so on. Knowledge representation and reasoning include uh, methods like logic programming, uh, prolog, answer set programming, which I'm using in this work and uh, other reasoning methods. When we use the statistical methods, uh, we assume that the knowledge we have are, are in the form of big data. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of samples a lot of, uh, and a lot of variables. For the knowledge representation method, we assume that our knowledge can be formulated in the, uh, as uh, logic rules and facts. So, in regression methods, the problem we are solving is a regression problem. We try to predict unknown variables that we are interested in based on available, uh, based on the available data. While in knowledge representation and uh, reasoning methods, uh, the problem we solve is a search problem. We, uh, we try to find the solution that, that satisfy uh, the rules uh, the, that satisfy the logic rules. Uh, in, in the area of, uh, of nuclear uh, plant management and control, we can benefit from statistical methods uh, by using big data from the history and uh, the simulations of nuclear power plant. Uh, wild reasoning methods uh, can be used to represent qualitative knowledge, such as uh, the operating procedures, the operation constraints, the flow path and the heat path and so on. When we use statistical methods, uh, the challenge is always about the sufficiency of data and the, and the relevancy of data. Sometimes the data we use to train uh, the AI model or the machine learning model are not enough and may not be, uh, may not be relevant enough to the actual application or the actual uh, uh, scenario. Uh, for the knowledge representation method, the knowledge is to make sure that we have that we we have a complete knowledge uh, of the of the problem. And another uh, another issue is that at some point the search space can get uh, very large uh, because. Uh, 
uh, knowledge representation is uh, and reasoning method is trying to solve a, a search problem. Uh, the motivation that we should consider uh, applying AI and using AI uh, in, in the nuclear uh, plant management control is the fact that decision making in the uh, nuclear plant control room faces some challenges. Uh, for example, uh, there is a, a huge number of uh, possibilities, a huge number of possible failures, and a huge number of actions to uh, uh, fix or mitigate uh, these failures. Uh, the operator or the human has some limits. For example, maybe the knowledge of the operator uh, is incomplete and uh, also the operator performance is subject to variation under psych psych psychological pressure. There are a lot of variables and a lot of alarms to monitor and the human capacity to monitor and reason about all these variables is limited. Uh, so that's why 80% of the uh, accidents or incidents are attributed to human error. Uh, additionally, in a, in a highly dynamic event, maybe the time is not sufficient for the operator to respond to, uh, to highly dynamic events. Because of all these uh, challenges, and uh, difficulties, uh, there are some uh, consequences. Uh, for example, the nuclear plant can lose over $1 million in revenue for every day they are shut down. So if there is a, uh, an incident or a, a malfunction uh, and, we, and the operator could not fix it uh, uh, quickly, we may have to shut down uh, the, the, the reactor. So this, uh, this will, will lead to a loss in revenue. Uh, also the management cost is higher and uh, a larger staffing size is needed. And of course the human error uh, uh, may impact the safety of the system. Uh, now I'll, I'll give, a, uh, I'll give a, an, uh, an overview of the uh, AI guided support system. So in general, it's a, it's a prominent goal of the, of the nuclear industry to minimize the chances of human error. Uh, the nuclear ind industry currently lags far behind other industries uh, like uh, aerospace and automotive uh, communication in implementing AI because many nuclear plants uh, rely on the uh, traditional analog uh, technology and also relying on AI uh, may uh, lead to some concerns about uh, the nuclear plant uh, cybersecurity. Therefore, recently there has been an interest in the implementation of AI methods that integrate information across the control room to assist the operator in, in diagnosis or decision making. Uh, this uh, would help in uh, minimize the needed staffing size and uh, enable uh, deploying reactors at remote sites. Uh, here I'm, I'm giving uh, a just a, a quick overview of the operator support systems that were uh, developed before that rely on statistical methods such as machine learning and statistic, statistical learning uh, or uh, vision network and so on. So, uh, so uh, AI methods or statistical learning have been used uh, to achieve different objectives uh, such as uh, uh, fault uh, detection uh, or diagnosis or uh, forecasting or process control or ranking uh, control uh, options and uh, a lot of work has been uh, done in this area. Sorry. The challenges we have when we uh, when we use statistical uh, statistical methods 
it's the fact that uh, data driven methods uh, are challenged because the data may, may be insufficient. Not all the fault scenarios are available. Also, there is a data imbalance. Uh, the nuclear plant history can be biased. The data driven models are uh, black boxes, which means that the logic behind these models uh, predictions cannot be uh, cannot be explained, and the operators uh, may not trust these models because uh, they are not uh, uh, interpretable. Uh, that's why the different methods cannot uh, used uh, uh, solely without other methods that represent uh, human uh, qualitative knowledge and mimic human reasoning, uh, and instead of uh, reliance on big data only. Uh, now I will talk about another kind of AI methods, which is uh, the reasoning methods. So the, the, the problem or the system is represented as a set of, of logic rules and the knowledge representation and qualitative uh, reasoning can be uh, beneficial to represent a different kind of qualitative knowledge. Uh, for example, the components uh, relation and connection between them, the flow and the heat uh, bath between different components. We can also implement the operator experience through the operation history. Uh, and uh, also the uh, operation uh, and emergency uh, guidelines. And there is a uh, uh, an overview of, of some methods that have been uh, used before for, uh, for reasoning, uh, for a reasoning system. Uh, uh, for example, uh, a rule engine based on Java and, uh, and a prologue and uh, uh, fuzzy logic, which, which is uh, a kind of logic programming that account for, uh, for uncertainty. And we also can uh, consider the event trees and fault trees as uh, as a kind of knowledge uh, as a kind of knowledge representation. Along with with these efforts for developing an uh, a reasoning uh, a, a nuclear plant uh, autonomous management, in this work we propose uh, a reasoning based operator support system. So. Uh, we developed a novel reasoning system based on uh, answer set programming, which is a kind of uh, logic programming. The reason we use uh, answer set programming in particular uh, is the fact that it, 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 is, it was proved to have a better performance and uh, scalability to uh, compare to other uh, Java-based rules engine. Uh, also, uh, ASP has uh, an advantage in knowledge representation uh, compared to event trees because uh, when we use event tree, event trees, each each uh, each event tree, each single event tree, uh, is representing uh, possible scenarios that can uh, happen as a result of an, an initiating event. While ASP code is a set of uh, basic facts and logic rules uh, from which all the scenarios uh, can be uh, concluded. Also, because all the rules are implemented in a logic program, uh, that this guarantees that all uh, the rules uh, are, are consistent. So we can make sure that the system, uh, can, the system can be proved to be formally uh, correct uh, and uh, uh, logically uh, consistent. Uh, in this slide, I'm, I'm giving a hint about uh, answer set programming. So answer set programming is a set of logic programming rules uh, that express the facts and rules and constraints about uh, the problem domain. It is also considered a declarative programming uh, that is used to solve uh, different uh, search problem, problems or optimization problems. So we, we search for the solutions that satisfy all the rules. 
uh, when we say it is a declarative programming, uh, we mean that the structure of the program uh, is different uh, from uh, the, the way we traditionally uh, write a program. So instead of, instead of writing the program as a set of steps, uh, which we need to do, to do step one, step two, and step three until the end to get the solution, uh, declarative programming is, uh, is mainly a description of, of the problem. So we describe the problem as a set of rules and the order of these rules doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't matter how, uh, it doesn't matter the order of, uh, of the rules or the order of the, uh, of the code. So there is no algorithm implemented. We just describe the problem and the ASB searches for a solution that uh, can uh, 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 fix or can satisfy this problem. Uh, the objective of this uh, work uh, is to demonstrate that uh, an ASP, an unsuited programming automated reasoning system, can assist the operator in fault identification, diagnosis, and in decision making. And we tested the capability of this new reasoning system by applying it to a realistic scenario, the Three Mile Island scenario. Uh, in particular, the first uh, 142 minutes or, or uh, uh, two hours and a half. Also, we demonstrate that the ASP uh, based reasoning system answers the diagnosis or recommendations uh, can be uh, accompanied by a rational explanation. So this is uh, uh, important and useful that the operator uh, not only gets an, a diagnosis or a recommendation to do a specific action, but also an explanation why this diagnosis or this uh, recommendation uh, should be followed. So here uh, is a general structure of the, uh, of the reasoning system. So on the bottom, uh, the operator has uh, a lot of monitors and there is a, a lot of a lot of signals for different uh, for different variables, such as uh, the pressure and temperature and water level and so on. And uh, these signals uh, are uh, categorized into two types, the variables and the actions. The variables uh, have the form of variable value time. So for example, we say that temperature uh, has this value at a specific time. And the actions has the form of attempt uh, procedure component time. So the operator attempted to do a specific procedure, for example, uh, increasing the flow rate and the component increasing the flow rate for a specific pump. And the time that this action uh, was performed at a specific time. And every time step, the the variable value and the actions uh, are updated. And then these inputs are, uh, they go to, the, to a knowledge base and the knowledge base includes uh, two kinds of logic rules, uh, static rules and time dependent rules. Static rules include something like the system uh, description, the components, the connections, uh, and so on. And also it, uh, we, we included a steam table. So the steam table can, uh, can be used uh, to understand the, the, the uh, status of the coolant and if it is uh, saturated or overheated and, and so on. The time dependent rules uh, include different kinds of rules. Uh, the first one is the actions executability condition. So for each action, we define an executability condition. So the reasoning system cannot recommend any action unless its execut executability condition is satisfied. We also include uh, some rules to infer non-observed variables. So non-observed variables can include something like uh, leakage, or a stack valve and so on. 
So from the observed variables, like temperature, pressure, and water level, we can infer non-observed variables. Also, uh, another kind of rules is inferring non-attempted actions. And uh, this includes all the actions that the operator have attempted or the, the actions that happened uh, automatically. Uh, for example, a reactor just tripped uh, automatically. And then uh, the answers or the outputs of, of the reasoning system uh, include uh, three kinds of outputs. The recommendations, uh, so at, at any time step, the output can be a recommendation to do a specific procedure at, uh, on a specific compo component at any time step. For example, open a specific valve uh, and non-observed variables like leakage and stuck valve and so on. And the inferred action, which the actions that uh, that uh, that happened uh, because the operator uh, executed these actions or because these actions uh, happened uh, uh, automatically. And every time step, the outputs are uh, the the knowledge base is updated by the outputs again and again. So, yeah. So so the knowledge base remembers what was the output in the, in the previous time step. And this uh, helps to uh, conclude the output in the next time step and, uh, and so on. Now I will uh, go quickly through uh, the case study that I used to test the, reason the reasoning uh, based operator support system, which is a three mile island uh, uh, scenario. So the Thema Island scenario is a, is a long complex scenario, but here uh, I am uh, giving a quick overview of what happened in the first two hours uh, and a half. Uh, so uh, it started by uh, a loss of feed water in the secondary loop and the turbine, the condensate pump and the feed water pump, all of them uh, have, have tripped because of, uh, because of the lack of feed water in the secondary loop, uh, as can be seen in the, in the figure here. Uh, because of the lack of the feed water in the secondary loop, the steam generator water level have dropped and uh, automatically, automatic controls have called for the auxiliary feed water uh, to compensate for the lack of, uh, of the feed water in the secondary loop but actually uh, the feed water uh, plug valves were closed by mistake before, uh, before the beginning of the scenario. Eight minutes later, uh, the feed water plug valve were opened by, uh, by the operator. So, the, so this problem was not uh, fixed until eight minutes later when the operator uh, uh, found out that the uh, the feed water block valve uh, were, uh, were closed. After the feed water uh, loss in the secondary loop, in the primary loop, the reactor current system pressure uh, increased uh, and the pressurizer PORV opened as required to relieve uh, the excess uh, pressure. A uh, few seconds, uh, uh, after this, the, uh, the reactor have uh, tripped, uh, have tripped automatically uh, because of the high pressure. Now, in the primary loop, the the primary loop pressure uh, started to decrease because the the PORV valve was uh, was open, uh, but actually the pressurizer uh, PORV failed to close when the pressure uh, when the pressure uh, decreased. Uh, that's why the coolant uh, continued to escape through the uh, through the uh, PORV, whose failure was not recognized by the staff uh, at this time. Now, because of the escape of the water 
through the BRV, the water level and the pressure in the, in the reactor uh, decreased and uh, steam was generated in the reactor core. And uh, of course, the operator uh, didn't know that the, there was steam in the reactor core in the beginning. Because of the reactor current system, uh, pressure, uh, uh, pressure decrease, uh, the high pressure injection system started automatically to, uh, to compensate for the, for the low pressure. And the pressurizer water level is started to increase again, uh, but it, it became too high that the level was off, uh, was off the scale. And the operators were trained not to let the pressurizer filled with water. So they decided that they have to uh, uh, throttle, they have to uh, shut down the uh, high pressure injection system pump uh, because uh, the operator were trained that they should not uh, let the pressurizer uh, water level uh, uh, too high. And of course, they didn't know that there was a uh, there was uh, steam in, in uh, there was steam in uh, uh, in the in the reactor. Uh, later on, the problem uh, the problem of the of the stuck open uh, 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 PRV uh, uh, problem was detected, and the block valve uh, BRV was closed. So now the leakage problem through the PRV uh, has been fixed. Later, the operators. Uh, turned it on the high pressure injection system pump again and referred the actor. And uh, by uh, finally, the, uh, the reactor current system was refilled with water, but the core uh, was partially uh, melted already. So, in this scenario, it was it's challenging for the operator to make timely decisions uh, for two main reasons. Uh, the first reason is the fact that there is a large number of variables uh, for the operators to monitor. Uh, for example, during the accidents, many alarms uh, uh, started, and the operator did not notice that the containment sump uh, water level was high. So the the alarm of the uh, of the containment sump high water level was turned was was started which suggested that there is a leakage in the RCS, but the operator did not notice that because there were many alarms. Uh, and this is something that a reasoning system can help with because a reasoning system has uh, a higher capacity to reason about many variables uh, at the same time. Another issue is the, uh, the misleading uh, readings. So, so, uh, there was a, a confusion about uh, the PORV uh, 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 valve. So the, the PORV was stuck open, but the operators believed that it was closed because of the control room indication. Uh, but actually the PORV uh, light was just an indication that the PORV uh, solenoid de-energized, giving a closed indication. So it wasn't really, it wasn't really, a, uh, it wasn't really an indication that uh, the PRV was closed. So, so there was a, a confusion about uh, about the PRV reading. Now back to uh, back to uh, uh, the reasoning system. So in the reasoning system here, uh, we we distinguish between two types of action. So in the inputs we have actions that are attempted, which, uh, which reflect uh, that the operator attempted to do a specific action, even, even if this action didn't succeed. And in the outputs, we have the actions that really happened. Uh, and the reasoning system can verify which actions have really happened by watching the action effect. So because of this uh, distinction between the actions that were attempted and the actions that have really happened, it is possible for a reasoning system to uh, to identify the problem of the of the PORV that even that there was an action to close uh, the 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 PORV uh, 
but the BRV was not really was not really closed because the pressure kept decreasing. Uh, so a reasoning system can uh, reason to uh, uh, to figure out this problem. So here I'm I will show how the reasoning system exactly is applied to uh, the three mile ac accident. So the first two component is the inputs, which are the variables and the actions. In this work, uh, these are the variables that uh, that were considered. Uh, they include something that, like the primary loop pressure and the bump flow rate of the auxiliary feed water and uh, other different pumps and so on. So we considered uh, all these uh, uh, all these variables and we have used uh, the real values the real values uh, of these variables from uh, from the from the actual scenario so every every variable has a value that that is changing uh, changing over time and these are the actions that uh, that are attempted uh, during uh, during the scenario, uh, for example, the first action is uh, attempting to open the pressurizer pilot operator valve at time equal seven, uh, and and so on. Uh, now I will move uh, to the outputs of the system. So the outputs include uh, the recommendations, uh, what what the operator should do the non observed variables, such as uh, leakage or a stuck valve, and the inferred actions, which include all the actions that happened by, uh, because, the because of the operator or happened automatically. So here I am, uh, I'm showing uh, some examples of, of, uh, of the outputs. So on the left side is, uh, is the different, the first, type of outputs, which is the recommendations. So uh, for example, at time equal one second, we have a recommendation to uh, start the auxiliary feed water pump. Uh, the auxiliary feed water pump has really started uh, very quickly. So that's why in the second time, we don't see this recommendation anymore. Uh, but we see a recommendation to open the, the block valve because the reasoning system has detected that the steam generated water, water level has dropped uh, very quickly. So this recommendation, uh, uh, this recommendation was, uh, uh, was suggested and, and so on at each time step, uh, other uh, recommendations uh, have been suggested. So here I am not showing uh, all the recommendations, I'm just, uh, showing uh, some of them at, at different uh, time steps. On the, on the other, uh, on, the, on the right side, this is the second output of the reasoning system, which is the non-observed variables. Uh, it includes something like the lack of water supply that was detected uh, in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of the scenario. We can see that by the end of this scenario, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, output uh, has, has disappeared uh, because, uh, because the valves of the feed water uh, have been opened. Uh, also, the existence of steam have been uh, detected at different time steps. Uh, for example, uh, here a time, at time equal uh, 1,000 second, the steam existence has has been uh, detected, and this is also uh, useful because because in in the real scenario uh, the operators didn't uh, know about the existence of steam uh, in in uh, in the reactor, and uh, we also see that uh, another another output is the is the fact that a specific a specific valve, the pressurizer pilot operated, operated relief valve, the PRV, uh, was stuck open and uh, so on. Uh, here is the third output on the left side, which uh, includes all uh, the inferred actions that 
happened by the operator or by the system. Uh, for example, uh, at time equal one second, the condensate bump has, has been tripped. Uh, we can see that at the end, uh, at time equal 4,000 uh, uh, second, the primary pump uh, was tripped and so on. Uh, in this work, the uh, computational expense of the uh, reasoning system for a 142 minute scenario was uh, 30 minutes only, uh, accounting for uh, 16 variables and eight actions, which indicates uh, a faster than real time uh, reasoning. Uh, of course, in, in reality, the number of variables uh, will be uh, much larger than 16. Uh, but on the other side, uh, we have used only a, a, a personal computer uh, with uh, four cores. So th there is an opportunity to use uh, HPC if the number of variables is higher. Also in, in this reasoning system, we assume that a new recommendation uh, or a new answer is needed every second, which is, is very fast. Maybe in reality, uh, we don't need a new answer every, uh, every second. So it may not be uh, as computationally expensive uh, as expected. Uh, also because, because we are using a reasoning system that is, uh, that consists of a logic rules, we can find the explanations uh, of any answer. So the ASP can output the explanation of any answer at any time step. Uh, and here, this explanation uh, is in the form of uh, in, in the form of a tree. So uh, on the right side, for example, uh, the reasoning system has detected steam in the primary loop. Uh, at time equal 9.01. Now, how, can, how, how did you know this? We know that uh, given the, the pressure of the primary loop and given the, the inlet temperature and uh, the saturation, uh, saturation uh, pressure. So we know that at the, if the inlet temperature is 577 Fahrenheit, the saturation pressure uh, should be uh, 1200 uh, uh, 58, uh, but in reality it was 901. So this is an explanation that the pressure was lower than the, than the saturation pressure. That's why uh, the system has detect has detected steam. Uh, another example here is uh, the fact that uh, the condensing pump was tripped. So the explanation of this is that the pump flow. Uh, condensed bump speed was 100% of the maximum speed and then it decreased uh, to zero. So the system explains that uh, the condensed bump was tripped because of this uh, uh, decrease in, in the bump flow rate. Uh, here is another uh, Another example that is uh, more complicated. So uh, on the top we have uh, the recommendation to open uh, the auxiliary feed water uh, uh, plug valve at this time step. Now this recommendation was suggested because the system detected that the auxiliary feed water plug valve was closed now uh, the system explains why this uh, valve is closed. So we know it, it is closed because uh, this plug valve belongs to the secondary loop and this uh, feed water pump belongs to the same loop. So both the valve and the, and the pump belong to the same loop. And uh, we know that the bump flow is 100%. However, there is a, there is a lack of, of, uh, of water supply. 
So because the bump flow rate is high, uh, is 100%, and the a lack of water supply was detected, uh, this, uh, this means that uh, there is an, an issue here, and the, and, and the system inferred that there is, there is an issue uh, of the valve because both the valve and the pump belong to the same loop. So if the, uh, if the coolant doesn't, uh, doesn't go from, uh, from the pump to, uh, to the steam generator, this means that this valve is, uh, is closed. And then the lack of photo supply is explained in, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of, other, of other variables. So we know that the water uh, level supply uh, is low. It was uh, uh, 20 uh, uh, centimeters here. And um, we know that a specific condensate bump belong uh, to the same loop. And we know that this bump was, was tripped. So the bump and the steam generator, uh, both of them belong to the same loop and the steam generator water level decreases. So this means that in this loop, there is a lack of, uh, of water supply. Oh, one second. Okay. Now I'll move uh, to the final conclusions. So recently, uh, different artificial intelligence methods have been uh, proposed to support the operator decisions in the, in the control room. Uh, some of these methods are uh, statistical. Uh, they rely on the, on the availability of the big data from the nuclear plant history or the simulations. Uh, these are driven methods. They benefit from the big data, but they are limited by the data availability and the data bias. And additionally, the data-driven models may not be interpretable and the operator may not trust the logic behind uh, these models that, that are considered uh, a black box. So in addition to these uh, statistical methods and machine learning methods, we need to use uh, reasoning, uh, reasoning, maze, reasoning based uh, methods to represent the human qualitative knowledge. And this work, we use uh, answered programming, which is a logic programming language. We applied uh, the reasoning system uh, on the Three Mile Island accident, considering 16 uh, changing variables over, uh, over uh, uh, two hours and a half. And the system gives uh, faster than real time diagnosis and recommendations. The reasoning system has a potential to assist the operator in making timely decisions because the ASP can perform reasoning about many variables uh, compared to, uh, uh, to the human. Um, also, the, the ASP code structure could distinguish between the executed action and the attempted action. And this feature is uh, significant because of the confusion about the PRV uh, uh, status. So this work is the first automated reasoning system to be applied to a scenario, uh, to a realistic, a realistic scenario such as a three mile island. Uh, the, the, the answers or the outputs of the reasoning system, the diagnosis and the recommendations can be accompanied by rational uh, explanations. So the operator can decide if these explanations uh, are acceptable or not. And based on this, the operator can decide to trust the reasoning system and follow the recommendations or the diagnosis or not. Uh, practically implementing an AI uh, decision support system still faces some challenges because uh, many nuclear plants uh, still rely on uh, analog technology um, and also using artificial intelligence uh, may increase the concern about uh, the nuclear plant uh, cyber security. 
Uh, however, the explainability of the ASP listening system uh, gives an advantage over other methods because the operator can decide to trust or not trust uh, the, uh, the AI uh, uh, recommendations. So these are uh, uh, the reference that, uh, that I used. And uh, um, I, I, uh, we acknowledge that uh, this work was supported by, uh, by APRA uh, uh, program. Um, yeah, that's my last slide. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I'm open for any question. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. So what I'd like to do for questions is if anyone, or I guess what I'd like to start doing is um, I'd like to first open the floor up to any questions for anyone who's here in person. Any questions from the people that are here? Hang on one second, we got one question over here. I'm gonna do a experiment with a yardstick. See how this works out here. Hang on one second. Okay. Hi, uh, thanks, thanks for your nice presentation. So I would like to know, um, so th since this model is trained by the, uh, say, uh, data from the accident, but have you ever uh, assessed this model in the normal operational conditions? Uh, I have assessed this model on other uh, scenarios that are not as severe as a uh, Three Mile Island accident. Uh, uh, for example, I, I used it uh, to, I used it for a decision making in a scenario where one of the valves in the secondary loop was stuck. Um, yeah, I just, I just didn't show it, uh, show it here. Uh, the point is that uh, because uh, we wanted to apply this to uh, a scenario where where there's a, there are a lot of a lot of variables uh, and a lot of actions because the more variables and the more actions, the more it gets complicated and the more uh, the more it becomes difficult uh, for the reasoning system and it becomes uh, more computationally expensive. So that's why I have shown uh, this particular scenario. But in uh, Yeah. Um, so in the in the in the references here, uh, yes, so, some of uh, so, so some of these references are are my work, and in 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 them you will find uh, other uh, more simplified scenarios. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the face to face audience? There we are. Hey, um, this is fairly new to me, so this might be an easy question, but what type of information or big data did you, did you use to train your models? Like, what information did you need that wasn't already um, prevalent at your disposal? Yeah, so the information that I use is, yeah, so, okay. So the information that I use are, the inputs are, the variables and the actions. So this can be something like the, the value of the coolant temperature in the first second was this value, Fahrenheit, and so on. And the actions, what the operator has, has done at every time step, that's the inputs. For the knowledge base, which is the, the reasoning uh, system itself, this is based on our understanding, our understanding of the of the system, uh, uh, um, yeah. For for example, uh, uh, for example, you know that a specific pump should be uh, should be running all the time. So if this pump is is not running, this means uh, there is a problem or someone turned off the pump. So we, we uh, for example, the first type of uh, of rules here are the actions executability conditions. So 
we list all the possible the value, all the possible actions that the operator can do, like uh, like uh, increasing the 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 power of the reactor or shutting down the reactor or opening a specific valve. We, we list all the possible actions, and for each action, we list the executability condition. So this is based on our understanding of uh, of the system. Uh, did I answer uh, the question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks. Okay, we got one more question from the on, from the face to face participants. Yeah. So with that in mind, it was to my understanding that artificial intelligence was more about like iterating on the knowledge base, um, and in terms of like machine learning, the computer science side is more of like changing the knowledge base itself iteratively over the course of the runs. So does this do that, or or is that knowledge base staying the same for all of your runs? Yeah. So in, in yeah. So in the beginning, I have made the distinction between statistical methods and knowledge representation and reasoning. So what you are talking about, you are talking about machine learning. Uh, what I'm doing is not machine learning. I, what I'm doing is, is reasoning. Does, is this clear? Uh, sorry, great. I, I don't, I thank don't you. see you. So. That's great, thank you. Oh, thanks. Any other questions from the face-to-face? Okay, so I'd like to open the, the questions up to the, uh, the online participants. I do want to emphasize that um, these presentations are being recorded, so uh, your questions will also be recorded. Um, if you would, if you're interested in asking a question, please raise your hand and I will call on you, and then unmute, mute your, unmute your microphone for the question. Any questions from the Zoom audience? We have a question from uh, Seamus McDonald. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay, so one of the things I saw in there was you talked about uh, a big, like one of the biggest challenges in actually implementing this was the fact that the plants all are using mainly analog systems still. Uh, yeah. But the system seems like it's still relying on a user input to actually t carry out any steps. So is the system, it's mainly just sensing everything, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, including the, the variables you get from the sensors, yeah. Okay, so what, what sorts of challenges would there be, or is, it just, is that just a, too big of a scope to actually cover how many challenges there are in actually implementing this overall? Yeah, so uh, for, for, for reasoning, methods in general, there are two main, two main uh, challenges. Uh, as I, uh, I was explaining here, the first, uh, the first uh, challenge is the fact that maybe our knowledge is complete. So, so you let the, you, you, you give the computer or you give the code, you, the rules you understand, but maybe, you're, maybe the rules uh, you implement are not complete. Uh, that's, uh, that's a problem that the knowledge may not may not be complete. That's why we may need to test the reasoning system ag against uh, many uh, scenarios uh, to make sure that the, the knowledge implemented are uh, are sufficient. That's number one. Number two uh, is that uh, the reasoning system what what it really does it 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 searches for the solution that satisfy all the rules. So the more rules you add. And the more variables you consider, it can uh, the search space can become uh, very complex. So, so that's another challenge that uh, we need uh, uh, we need to, to address. So, for this scenario, uh, the large the search space was not was not uh, very uh, very huge because still the number of rules was not. Uh, too much, but maybe if we if we have more knowledge about the system, we will implement more rules. Maybe the search space will increase, and the computational expense uh, uh, may increase. And this is something that we need uh, also to to test. Is this okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, additional questions from our the online Zoom community. Please raise your hand and I will call on you. Mihai? Thank you, Steve. Um, thank you for the presentation. Thank uh, you so much. Um, I have a question. Uh, does your approach, um, is your approach able to handle conflicting information or biased inputs from the uh, reactor? Uh, can you give an example of conflicting information? Well, let's say uh, one uh, input that you get remains stuck or it uh, or it's biased linearly or exponentially or you know it's not the real input from yeah. the real yeah uh, so until now I didn't try this uh, but what I'm sure about is that uh, because it's a logic program, so if 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 if, uh, if the if the data we have uh, are in conflict with the rules, uh, the ASP uh, might not work. So it will not give a wrong answer, but it will it will just uh, have a problem that okay the, there is no there is no solution that satisfy. Uh, that satisfy uh, this uh, this data or this status, and uh, and this can be good because we don't expect the reasoning system to work all the time. We just wanted to uh, not to give the wrong answer, uh, but but yeah, I need to I need to try uh, this idea of uh, of conflict and see how can we reason about conflict. Yeah, thank you for this uh, for this uh, idea. Yeah. You can look into ADS IDEC and you can get in touch with me as well and we can discuss further. Yeah, sure I will, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we have time for one last question from the, uh, from the Zoom community. Going once, going twice. Okay, so if there are not any other questions, I would like to once again thank our speaker and um, I'd like to thank everyone for a very, very, uh, very, very nice uh, first seminar talk and first attempt to try to do this uh, remotely. So uh, thank everyone for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.